Hi guys, it seems that a lot of people are impressed by uh, my cockpit. So thanks a lot for the views and likes and comments. I'm really glad you liked it. I didn't know a lot of people were interested by this kind of stuff. So thanks a lot. Okay, I received a lot of questions about my cockpit, about how, how I made the cockpit. How I made the controls, the, the electronic parts, what kind of solution I used. Uh, what kind of display I choose and this kind of stuff. So today let's talk about uh, the displays and the screens. Uh, what kind uh, of uh, screens you can buy nowadays, what kind of solution you can uh, use if you are making a desk, desk pit, if you are making a real cockpit and this kind of stuff. So let's talk about that and it begins right after the opening. Okay, back in the pit. So now let's talk about the main screens. You have basically three solutions. VR, but that's another subject. Let's talk about that another time. You have the big screen, one big screen solution and triple monitor setup. Okay, so you can start with one screen. That's all right. A lot of uh, simmer has started with what, just one screen. My advice, go for a bigger screen. When you have something like 24 inches screen, that's all right uh, for working on your computer or gaming on FPS because you are more close uh, to the screen. In simulation, you are not so close to the screen. With the controls, you are like that in the chair. Maybe after one hour, you will be like that uh, of flying. So I would go for a bigger screen. Uh, if you want to add uh, an external display uh, in the future or maybe a rudder, you are getting away from your screen. So really take a bigger screen. But you have to think about the resolution of the screen because it will just get some resource on your graphic cards. If you don't want to spend so much money on a 4K resolution, bigger screen with a monster graphic card, just go on average resolution. That will be fine. So 27 or 32 uh, inches screen with full HD resolution, that's okay. That's all right. The other solution is triple monitor setup. But for that, you will need a bigger graphic card especially if you play DCS with high uh, resolution texture. If you want a triple monitor setup, you need to remember that your graphic cards need surround with NVIDIA graphic cards or Ifinity with AMD graphic cards. In the software, we can choose which monitors will be considered for the main display. So it is considered as just one display. So with this kind of graphic cards, you might have a force output that you can use for an external display. Remember, this kind of setup requires real big graphic cards because you have now a resolution something like 5400 on 1090 pixels. So yeah, be prepared to spend some money, especially if you want adjustable screens because they are a bit more expensive. For myself, I just choose to have a, a big graphic cards but with second end uh, screens. And that's my choice. Last solution is the white screens, something like 34 or 49 inches screens. But actually the height is not that big and it's still a bit expensive. So I'm not totally convinced about that solution. If you want to add other external display, uh, for, like for example little screens for the cockpit and so on, you will need more output, obviously. So you will need to add the adapter USB adapter, this kind of thing, but it doesn't uh, work really well and it's kind of expensive if you want good quality. The USB adapter from uh, AliExpress and this kind of thing uh, are really cheap, okay, but are really not working on high resolution. So for later screen, that's enough. For bigger screen, for the MFD or this kind of thing, just forget it. So adding a second graphic card, yeah. But you will need to check the driver. For the example, 
The 3070 Ti has a driver that is not compatible with lower graphic cards than 1050 Ti. You can also use an AMD graphic card with Nvidia because they have two separate drivers. But just make sure about the compatibility. If you want to add a second graphic card into your computer, just check the driver compatibility. So, whoa, right, that's the caps going then. You also have external graphic cards, but it could be really expensive. And hmm, that's older uh, technology, actually. So don't go through uh, this kind of solution. You also have USB displays, something like that. They are not for photographs, they are really a computer display and they are running DisplayLink drivers. So you can find them on lilliput.com or a DisplayLink website, but that's still a bit expensive. So for external display, the easiest solution is to plug directly your cables into your graphic cards with an HDMI cable or a DisplayPort HDMI adapter. That's the solution I use for my pit and I just need longer cable to go through my computer. So for the little screens now, I got mine on AliExpress. You can find 8 inches for the MFD for example, 5 inches for the little instruments or also round displays for the RWR or this kind of little instrument. I could also find an 11 inches display for the center pedestal and all of this is going through HDMI. Okay, for the speed now, you have once again two solutions, a little screen, for example uh, 8 inches uh, from AliExpress, uh, you can place them just behind the MFD from Thrustmaster, that's a great solution and I use that solution in my uh, cockpit. Or you can have just one bigger external display, a sensitive display for example, you have uh, the HDMI for the display and uh, the USB. And uh, really that's a great solution, you can uh, push uh, the switches on the screen and uh, it, uh, it will uh, activate the switches in the, the sim uh, with uh, some, some software like uh, Helios, this kind of thing. That can be a really great solution. And the last solution is to use a big screen behind a piece of wood, just drill some hole for uh, the instrument and so on, or place the MFD from Thrustmaster into the piece of wood and have the screen behind this piece of wood. But you need some wood skills. So now we have uh, still time for question and answer. I've got this question from Patrick Williment. Wow dude, that's amazing. I'd love to know whether a person who can fly really well in DCS can actually fly the real thing. Could be interesting. Thanks Patrick for your comment and yes, that could be really interesting to know that. Speaking about myself, I fly for over 15 years now on flight simulators on computer, so flight sim from Microsoft DCS and especially Falcon BMS. I fly also in real life in gliders, cell planes, and I could enjoy some aerobatics flights, something like 4 to 5.5 Gs. So I'm used to this kind of thing, but I'm not going over 9G like in F-16. But I could uh, try the real simulator on a military air base and the instructors say to me, good landing. Speaking about flying, you have a different 3D impression, obviously because in the sim you just have a 2D display. So you can't really evaluate when the gears are about to touch the ground or if you are 3 meters above the runway. But again, with the VR helmets, that's not a question anymore. I think the real struggle is if you are used to high amount of G's for a long time or for real procedure like classified or weapons limit enemy or lied. So you really need to train all days. You know there are some real like simmers or virtual squadrons that are using real procedure but we are not working the same way than a real pilot is. We do not have the same questions. For example, friends of mine ask real pilots and the pilot is answering but what you are asking to me, that's not a, a question for me because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and I do what I learned. So, in my opinion, sim must stay just a hobby, not a work. 
and that's the real big difference between a real pilot. And that's my conclusion. Okay, my video is now over, I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment if you want to talk more about it. See you for another subject about cockpit making and don't forget, safety first. But caution, doesn't ring a bell.